Oh, would you look at the time? Clock says it's time to crank all six of these PVs up to 11. Get this truck tore down. Front clip is off. Keith and Howie stopped over at the right time. Got a little hand with that stuff. Keith, just grab that bar there and push down on it, would you? Yeah, we didn't take any bolts out of that. It's got the quick release engine option, I guess. I think we're ready to go short bed with this thing. The wheelbase difference is nine and a quarter inches between a long bed and a short bed pickup. So took my nine and a quarter here, nine and a quarter here, and then half of that is four and five eighths. So we get a nice Z cut here, get more weld surface area when we're not relying on a completely vertical joint there in shear. And as you've seen, I leveled all the way across the frame here in both ways. The thing's dead flat in every plane. And I don't know, when I cut it, it might unload a little bit. Might have to move it up and down a little bit to get everything flat again. we have got a jack stand back there because I think when we cut this, it's going to go like that. And just in case I miscalculated here and it does want to flip forward, I got another jack stand up underneath the front here. So let's hack her apart.
75 year old frame didn't weld too bad. And we beat her out enough, we got full penetration in through the backside. I'll run another bead on the backside of these yet. Let's get some of these old dinosaur parts off here, huh? Dusty. We well, got this frame cleaned up somewhat here. Looks like they just kind of painted over the rust the last time they did it. Oh, we cleaned it off halfway decent. See, we got some pretty bad pitting here, but kind of is what it is at this point. The area that we need to mount our new suspension there is good. I'll show you that in a second. But that just goes on where our old leaf spring front perches went here. So what we got going back on here is a TCI parallel four link kit and this kit is specific to the three quarter tons uh, being that three quarter ton frame is quite a bit narrower than what a half ton frame is half ton frame bows way out underneath the cab so it's kind of a good thing because uh, we'll be able to fit some bigger meats there before we hit the frame rail but back to this kit it's kind of like a sore dick deal you can't beat it <laughs> Uh, as far as the price goes on it, I don't know that I could buy the material and build it for uh, what we got into it here. And another Thordick deal over here, this crusty old 8.8 .8 rear end. I know what you're thinking, man, that thing looks like hell. But uh, it's scaly, but it's really not pitted. I think a couple hours of elbow grease and go to the town with her with the needle scaler there. And uh, she'll be looking pretty good. This is out of a 2001 Ford Explorer. It's got a 373 gears and a posi in it. I do have another one of these axles out in a lean-to. If I can't get this thing to clean up, I'll use that. But that's got a 410 in it uh, and an open carrier. And, and it's just not ideal. So we'll be back in a couple hours and see what we can make this old wreck look like. Well, today is now tomorrow. And a couple hours turned into, well, we'll just call it a few. But we've got something that we can work with now. The old needle scale, scaler and uh, wire wheel on the grinder there. I still need to lop the old mounts off here so we can weld our new stuff on. I'm going to torch them off and then pull the cover so we can pull the axles out and get them nasty old brake brackets off and do something with those yet. <laughs> Thank you. 
about ready to burn these mounts on here. So I got the instructions here. And I've put angle iron on the flanges so I can offset those flanges because they're the ring gears in the way to measure across. So bump that out so I can pull tape across. And I've got 54 inches across there. So half of that is 27, right? So we got to be 38 inches spaced here. And it says the pinion's got to be pointed up one degree in comparison of the flats on the back side of there. So I've got my angle finder on the pinion set to one degree. And got a little jack bolt in there so I could do a little fine tuning. So 38 inches, half what's half of 38? Uh, 19. 27 minus 19 is 8 inches. Oh, 8 inches, huh? Ooh, nails on a chalkboard. Right about there. 8 inches. That's money, dude. <laughs> One thing I do see here is I'm gonna have to open these up a little bit. This 8.8's got a three and a quarter inch tube. It's got a little more girth than them shivy rear ends. So <laughs> I'll have to open them up a little bit and I'll probably throw a little weld bevel on them too. called her quits last night we coated this frame with some osphal a rust converter I've shown this many times on the channel also blasted them brake brackets up and coated those and threw a coat on the axle I think it's been long enough she's ready for some paint before I welded these on I did blast those too because those were just cold rolled steel they're pretty slick so give the a, a little bit of tooth for some paint to stick We've got a nice mess going on the floor here, but we've got ourselves a freshly restored Ford Explorer 8.8 .8 rear end here with the four link brackets. I also went ahead and sandblasted all the rest of these four link parts so they'll hold some paint. Won't uh, flake off on us right away. And the axle's pretty well ready to go back together, put the axles back in, but we need to convert this bolt pattern from a five on four and a half to a five and four and three quarter Chevy bolt pattern to match our front suspension. So I need to run to town and grab some wheel studs to go in here for an 87 Corvette. Hint, hint. <laughs> but before I go and do that, we're going to jump on the computer and build ourselves a drilling fixture for this axle so we don't have to buy one. Here's our first attempt. Failure. <laughs> See, she's tight. She won't go down on. And looking at this, get on there. You can see we're tight on the outside, and there's a kind of a gap in the center here. I know that my dimensions are good on my drawing because it's a four and a half inch bolt circle. 
we know that for sure. And I measured the OD of this, and in my drawing, it's at six and a quarter. And I'm coming up like 50 thou short on the overall diameter. That's just kind of an attribute of 3D printing. This material is ASA. Different materials have different shrinkage rates. So I just need to go back and scale my drawing up, whatever the percentage is. It's probably less than 1% to uh, make up the difference of that 50 thousandths. Attempt number two. Look at that. Beautiful. And these big holes here, I've got size for this here piece of chrome shaft. This is actually a part of the steering rack that I cut off on my Buick when I shortened that up. <laughs> but uh, on that first one I printed, this wouldn't go in the hole. And now it's a like perfect slip fit. So what we're going to do is cut this in half and make a drill guide. One quarter inch and one, I think we need a half inch for our new wheel studs. set up here got my new wheel studs I measured the neural diameter it's looking like a half inch drill will give me about a 10 thou interference fit so I clipped the vice grip on here I'm worried that uh, the chips are gonna get stuck in here and it's gonna spin my uh, spacer out in there and that could melt that plastic and <laughs> things get wonky so got that clipped up I've got my cutting all ready we're gonna go for it For the moment of truth. Oh, I wish I had something a little smaller to test fit on here. But what's what I got laying around? Great success. be it for this rear end besides for a blast in this cover up and see I gotta weld this shut here where it rusted through yeah just kidding <laughs> we got this frame all restored here after we asphalted it we hit her with the old 3m 8883 I didn't do the cross members yet because I don't know if those are sticking around or not but got the rest of the parts painted up here in our paint booth got them hanging and I uh, also went back and laid a nice fat cover pass on the inside of our frame splice there. So in order to get our four link brackets mounted up, we need to punch these holes out that used to be for the spring hanger for, we need to open them up to seven sixteenths. And then we need to drill an additional five eighths hole for our, uh, where this bolt passes through here for the upper link mount.
baby. We're going to be able to pack some serious meat underneath the back of this truck. That's kind of the beauty with starting with a three quarter ton frame. It's a lot narrower than a half ton. So I went outside and measured the box. There's actually another two inches per side that uh, we could push this out. And with a little mini tub in the box, I mean, you can go probably into here yet. So that's pretty cool. Got the tape stretched out here to the front axle and right at 116 inches. That's where we want to be for a factory wheelbase. But if you ever look at these series trucks from the side, the rear axle is pushed way forward in the wheel well. I'll throw a picture up for that. But we're going to try and stretch this wheelbase a little bit. There's plenty of adjustment on these four link arms. I'm going to stretch them out about an inch and a half. And that's going to dictate where this needs to land because this needs to be five inches behind axle center line to mount our coilovers. I also see this is a little bit tall here. I'm going to have to grind this down a little bit to get it inside the frame rail. I got them adjusted. We got one inch out of her. I'll take it. Um, I pulled the joints apart and measured what we had for thread there. Right now we got a good solid inch of thread engagement yet. And with the rule of one and a half times your thread diameter, we're looking good there. I also deviated from the instructions a little bit here and flipped this arm around. So we get at the jam nut. It was buried up in that bracket before and there was no physical way to tighten it. So we'll get our cross member bar here trimmed up so she's fitting in frame and get some shocks on this thing. Well, that's not very handy. The wind is just blowing to beat hell outside and... Now the power went out. I'd imagine this is going to take a while before that comes back on. Wow. Yeah, she is freaking sporty out here. It's going to be a while before the power comes back on. Well, boys and girls, show must go on. We got work to do. there be light <laughs> oh as you've seen i clamped this bar down here to the frame uh, instead of trying to plumb down onto the center of the axle tube it's kind of hard to determine exactly where the middle is so we plumb down to the edge of the tube and let that string just kiss the side of the axle tube and uh what we need here is five inches from the end of this tube to axle center line so we just took the half of the axle diameter and subtracted that from our measurement so it gave us these are three and a quarter inch axle tube so inch and five eighths we needed three and three eighths from here to here so we got that bar in there after a bunch of grinding and beating and more grinding but i ended up having to take uh, about an eighth inch off this total i tried to take it off the top and the bottom evenly so i didn't disrupt the center line here and also had to grind off each end to even get it into the frame rails so after that struggle we got her in there and i got the shocks shoved on here and i don't have these bolts drilled through all the way yet uh, that's because i want to make sure we're not turned one way or the other the shocks if i tighten them up that'll kind of get everything aligned where it needs to be now, also i had to well to start in the instructions it shows that this takes these half inch bolts. Well, them sleeves in there are five eighths. So I'd imagine they uh, changed their kit at some point. 
And it kind of looked like these bolts were intended to go in the lower shocks, in the lower shock bolts. But stick them in there and you can see that they're much too long for that location. So, so while the power was out, I went and bought a couple grade 8 bolts from the hardware store. And uh, these must be plated with real gold because uh, they were six bucks a piece. One other thing they didn't mention in the instructions is, that's kind of self-explanatory, but these tubes are not welded straight or plumb or orthogonally with those tubes that go through the frame, obviously, because the frame's at a little bit of an angle there. So if you got this upside down, these things would be sticking way up in the air. So with that, I'm going to tighten these shocks up. That should kind of self-align our bar this way and this way. And then we'll punch these holes the rest of the way through the frame. And then install our panhard rod. What do we got going on here? Well, I checked the distance between the tire and the frame rail on both sides and got a little discrepancy here. I think it was three eighths of an inch or so. And I didn't want to load up the panhard rod to get it shoved back over because that's just going to put the suspension in the bind. And I was trying to see what, uh, what the deal was here. I got the chassis leveled. She's sitting flat on the hoist. And if you can see that, torpedo level there. I don't know if you can see that bubble, but both of these frame brackets are splayed out. And if you remember, we had 38 inches center to center on those brackets on the axle, and the frame should reflect that too. Well, it turns out both of these are kind of bowed out, so. We're going medieval with the old ratchet binder. I had the porter power out to try and make something work, but I think this is going to work for us. I'm just using the clevis for the sway bar. We'll pull this one in. I'm going to loosen these bolts up first here because these holes are actually slotted in the bottom here. So we'll reefer tight. I'll go a little bit past and zap these back down. And then we'll jump to that side and do the same. front of the chassis. We're going to measure corner to corner and see where we're at. Well, 135 and an eighth. My tape's about to fall off. I'm going to rehook it. <laughs> dead nuts. I mean dead nuts. That's not a 16th out. I love it when a plan comes together. I also checked my width from the frame rail to the tire again, and it is also dead nuts. So, <whistles> nice! How about that Carolina squat? <laughs> We're gonna pull her outside with the skid steer and spin her around, bring her back in so we don't have to work back in the corner here and get to ripping and tearing on this front suspension. Our next objective is to completely strip the front half of this frame out and make room for all this nice jewelry from Flat Out Engineering to mount our C4 VET components. It'll also give us a spot to mount this unit here. Fortunately, we're gonna have to cut her off here though. She's getting a little long on time, so. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.